friends, it's Christy back with you on the My Favorite Things YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the brand new Christmas Tree Farm stamp set from Stacy Yakala. I just fell in love with these sweet critters the moment I saw them. So I've stamped everything out on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Extreme Black Hybrid ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my Fox and for him I'm using YR12 YR14 and YR18. This is usually my go-to combo for foxes. I think the brown undertones in this orange combo really lends itself to a nice realistic fox color. I prefer to color darkest to lightest, so I'm starting with the YR18 and laying in some shadows under the brim of the hat and on the sides of the face, also over the nose so that the muzzle kind of looks pushed out. I'll also add some shadows to the ears where they're popping out of the hat and to the back of the legs and where the jacket is casting a shadow and then also on the underside of the tail. And I'm blending that out with the YR14, just making sure to really scrub over the edge of the YR18 and pull that darkest color into the mid-tone so that I get a nice smooth blend. And then I'll continue with my lightest shade, the YR12, and I will fill in all the rest of the areas that I want to be orange with this shade. I am going to leave some white on the lower half of his face, also his little paws and his feet, and of course the tip of his tail. Then I'm going to come in with E000 and E00 for the white areas, just to add a little bit of shading there, just for something different than the typical gray. I find that it transitions really nice from the YR shades into the white. I'm also going to add a little flesh tone to the inside of the mouse's ear and the lower half of his face and his belly and feet. And I did put it on his paws, but I'm going to change that later on and do mittens on him instead. So I'm blending out the E00 with the E000, and then I'm going to move on to the rest of my mouse. And this is a new favorite combo for mice for me. It's W00, E70, and E71. I really love those E70 shades because they're a really beautiful grayish. It's like a, a mix between a gray and a beige, but the E70 isn't light enough for me to use as a highlight. So I started adding in the W00, and because it's so warm, I find that it really works well with these, and I just love the way it turns out. I'm also going to use them on the metal part of my axe. I thought about doing these in cool grays, but I just decided to do them in these same shades so that I have another pop of this color palette somewhere else on the scene. And then I'm doing some rosy cheeks using R000, R11, and R20. And I'll do the insides of their ears as well. So I start with the R20 blend out with the R11, and then that R000 is so nice and pale that it really just blends it into the flesh tone or the fur tone or whatever it is that you're coloring. And then I'm going to switch up to some browns using E53, E55, E57, and E59. And I'm gonna use these a few places. I'm gonna use them for the trunk of the Christmas tree, also the Christmas tree sign, and the wooden handle on the ax. So I started with the E59 and then blended that out with the E57. For the tree, I'm putting it on the right side. For the Christmas tree sign, I decided to put it on the right side for the post, but the actual sign, I'm gonna put it on both sides on the edges so that the part where it says Christmas tree is gonna end up being the lightest shade so you can still legibly read the sign and then also just filling in the axe handle. So I'm using all four shades on there so that I get a nice range of color to help it look more like natural wood. And by the way, I'm also coloring four more Christmas trees off screen, exactly the same. I just wanted to have a few more of them to create my little Christmas tree forest. 
For the fox's coat, I decided to go with red. I wanted to use some traditional Christmas colors in this scene. So I pulled out R24, R29, and R39. So I'm starting with the R39 and laying in some shadows um, up on the back of the collar, on the underside of the arm, where the front of the jacket overlaps with the left and the right side of it and then also under his arm and under the axe. I blended that R39 out with the R29, and now I'm coming in with the R24, which is gonna give me a nice bright red to kind of fill in the highlighted area. I'm also going to give the little mouse a red scarf. So I'm switching back to my R39 again and just adding that in the little creases and also separating the tails of the scarf that are hanging down his back and then blending out with the R29 and filling in with the R24 again. And then I'm going to give him some mittens to match, but because they're so small, I'm just using the R39 and then jumping straight to the R24 so that I get the nice glow on the top. And then I'm gonna do the fox's beanie in um, the, the rim of it to have red and white stripes. So I'm gonna just do every other stripe. And this time I just started with the R29 to give it a slightly different look. So I'm using the R29 down the right hand side and then across the bottom of each of those stripes and then blending over with the R24. For the top of the hat, I wanted to go with kind of a bright lime green. I started with YG03, YG05, and YG07, but the YG07 wasn't quite dark enough, so I pulled in the YG09, and then I ended up skipping over the YG05. It just didn't seem like it was necessary in that mix. And then I'm going to do the white stripes on the hat by going back to the W00 and adding in the W1. And I'll also do the pom-pom on top of the fox's hat. And then I'm going to do my Christmas tree with some bluer greens. I'm using G14, G16, G19, and G29. And I'm just starting at the bottom with the G29 and doing little flicking motions in an upward motion. Then I'm going to start adding in the G19, pulling that color up toward the top, continuing the little flicking motions. And next I started with the G16, although I only used it on that top tier and quickly realized that it was almost identical to the G19 in that small space and that it wasn't really necessary. So I just dropped straight to my G14 to fill in the rest and I'm gonna do that combo for all the rest of the Christmas trees that I'm coloring off screen as well. And then I'm just gonna take these images and trim them out with their matching dies. For my focal panel, I'm taking two pieces of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. I die cut both using the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stackables, and then I also use the Stitched Slimline Snowdrifts for one of those. You don't have to use the Slimline, but that's what I have. I'm going to take some Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and add that all over the top of this rectangle piece. I want that to be my sky. So I'm just blending that on nice and heavy because I want it to be really vibrant, making sure it's nice and smooth though. And then I'll take a little of that ink and add it to the top of my snowdrift as well to give it a bit of a frosty look. Then I'll switch back to my first panel because I wanted to add a little bit more interest into that sky. So I'm going to take the Salvage Patina Distress Oxide ink and add some water to that on an acrylic block so that I can do some splatters with that. Just mixing that up with a thin paintbrush and then tapping that paintbrush against the block to give me some nice fine splatters. I'm also going to take some plain water and do some more splatters just so that'll lift a little bit of that Distress Oxide ink up. And then I will also take some Pearlized Shimmer using my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and I'm going to splatter that all over the background as well. And that's just gonna give it a really pretty shimmer when you tip this card into the light. And then I will set this panel aside to dry. 
Then I'm going to take some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and stamp a sentiment at the bottom of my snowdrift piece. I find that this ink works really well on that Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that has that coating on it. Um, it's just a little bit of a slicker surface of cardstock. So um, I'm stamping that down twice to make sure it is nice and bold. And then I will set that aside and pop my card base in my Misty. This is Caribbean Sea cardstock that I have scored and folded to a standard A2 size card. So it is four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And I'm taking the squirrel image that is dragging his Christmas tree behind him and stamping that on the inside along with the sentiment that says Merry Christmas to you. And once again, I'm gonna stamp that down several times to make sure that it is nice and bold. And then I am going to grab some pattern paper. I'm gonna use the Cheerful Plaid 6x6 pad, and I'm gonna flip through and choose one of these pieces to use on my card front. Any of these would have been beautiful, and they all have that traditional Christmas color palette with the greens and the reds, and then there's a bit of aqua blue in there, which is really gorgeous and goes well with the sky. I ended up going with this small plaid, so I'm going to trim that down with another of the A2 Stitch Rectangle Stackables set two, and then I'm going to take that and adhere it to the front of my card base. It's going to be just slightly smaller than the front of my card, so I'll get a little border of that turquoise cardstock showing through on the outside edges, which will tie in that plaid. And then I'm going to pop up my sky piece with some foam tape. And then I'll take the snowdrift piece and just add some liquid glue and adhere that down. I didn't put any glue toward the top of it so that I can tuck some of my Christmas trees behind that hill. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take my colored images and try to figure out the layout that I want. I want the fox and the mouse to be down toward the sentiment at the bottom of the hill and then have these Christmas trees kind of arranged behind them. So I'm just figuring out where I want everything to go and where to place that Christmas tree sign. At first I thought maybe down toward the bottom. But I like to the look of it kind of up toward the top just helped kind of fill in some of the top of the scene. So once I have everything laid out, I'm going to grab my liquid glue and start tucking things in here and there. Um, the top two trees I'm going to tuck behind that snowdrift like I mentioned, and then the other three will go over top. And I just wanna make sure that they are at varying heights and I'm also gonna take that Christmas tree sign and just tuck it back behind the fox, kind of in the middle of this little cluster of trees. So I'm gonna have them just kind of on their little adventure, looking for the perfect Christmas tree to cut down, although all of these trees look pretty special to me. They're all created equal, so. I'm gonna do one more, and this one's gonna be the one that is closest to them down in front. Um, I'm not pressing things down really firmly yet in case I want to shift things. I'm just kind of setting them down carefully. So I'm going to add my fox next and then the mouse is going to go down to the right and just a little bit lower. So it's really drawing your eye toward the sentiment. And then because the mouse was a little bit lower in the scene, I decided to shift the front Christmas tree a little bit lower as well to just give it more balance on that left hand side. Then I took a few clear sequins and placed those around the scene to kind of look like falling snow. So I'm just gonna grab a little jewel picker here and pick those up so that I can add some glue underneath and secure those to the card front. And then I'm gonna let that glue dry for maybe a minute or two, and then I will grab some Stardust Stickles, and I'm just gonna fill in the centers of each of those sequins to give them a little bit of extra sparkle. 
And that is going to finish up this card. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of that sparkle and shine and the detail a little bit closer and then give you another peek at the inside. Love that squirrel. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I love chatting with you guys. Subscribe to my favorite things for more inspiring videos just like these here on screen. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.